So today, all right, so this is what's going on today. I was thinking about it as I do the um, sketchbook series. And so much, I'm seeing so many amazing sketches and how you're really taking these ideas and making them your own. And it just fills me up. I can't even tell you. I appreciate that you come here and you watch me do what I do and then you go and create your own and it's so wonderful. So I was thinking about today and um, one of the things like a lot of people travel, you know, even if it's a weekend away to the lake or to visit friends or family and we try to bring a little something so um, that we can sketch and hold on to those experiences. So I was thinking about um, our summer trips and ones that we've had in the past and we're just doing a few little ones this summer um, since I already spent a lot of time in Italy <laughs> so but um, I was thinking about things that I bring back with me and how it becomes part of like a little collection and so I have from years of collecting you know just a little bowl of um, some coral that I've picked up on the beach when I've gone to the beach I have some little shells and I thought well you know that's a great way to not only engage um, in recalling our experiences and making notes and thinking about it just like what we did last week where we looked through the iPhone and we captured a moment through our phone and um, and painted that it was really fun to do and I enjoy creating that and so part of my artistic philosophy is that we need to <clears throat> bring ourselves to the artwork it's something about us so yes I can sit here and agonize over drawing the perfect dahlia but what does it mean to me am I bringing myself to that dahlia or to the rose or whatever it is or the face whatever it is I choose to draw so I'm always trying to improve my skill however I'm also trying to really explore my own style and I think that's something that you should do so drawing is a skill there are you know it's something we have to practice over and over again and the more you practice and deciding on which direction you want to go if you want to be a very have something very photorealistic very highly rendered that's one direction or it could be more expressive somewhere in between or you could draw something completely abstract and so it's all about what you feel and what makes you feel um, fulfilled when you're drawing but I think drawing is a really important part of the creative process for me anyway and I know many artists and you don't have to draw something perfect for it to be good and I like scribbly drawings <laughs> I love like when I see some of the sketches like there are these raw beautiful scribbly little flowers and I find them so beautiful and raw and it's immediate so um, we're still when we're drawing we're working on our observation skills, we're connecting our head and our hand and our heart because we're observing, we're thinking, we're working. And I think when we can combine those three elements, your head, your hand, and your heart, that's when your, your style is really going to continue to grow. So you can see I've been working on these big florals and this is something I'm kind of working on for the class, like really, like thinking about it. it's not about I'm going to paint this it's just about really looking at my subject and how can I bring me through the subject not just I don't want to make a perfect flower I find it much more fulfilling to really lose myself in looking at the flower and thinking about certain things and what it is that I find beautiful and so bringing that so today I wanted to give you the idea of looking at collections that you have and then how you're connected to those collections and why you collect that so for example I just showed you my coral and my shells shells I also have a collection of feathers that I've picked up along the way some of them were gifts I have in my kitchen this collection of 
pottery, little, uh, all the same color that Olivia made. And it's really important. And I would love to like put that in a painting someday. So I think that looking at your own collections and, or if you're, let's say you're at the beach and you collect some shells or, or you're at a cottage and you collect some stones or feathers and draw those, observe it, observe the, the shape, observe the texture and that combined with what your experiences are and who you are and the things you love will come through in your drawing and it really helps that um, our evolution of our art. Okay, so with that, I'm going to flip it around and talk about what I'm gonna, just kind of give you some ideas today of what you can bring to your sketchbook. All right. What I have here is some water. I just wanna show, show you my little feather collection too. I have all these feathers that I've collected over the years. Some of them were gifts, like this was a gift from my friend Ivy Newport. And there's a big one. Oh, I think it's in the other room from Jean Oliver. And this one I found in my mom's backyard when I was moving her. So I have a, I don't know why that's in here, the pod. So I keep those and that's something I could pull those out and I could do an entire series if I felt the need or desire, but I just love them. I love having them in my studio and my little dried flowers, which I find beautiful. All right, so I just keep them all in this little vase and Olivia brings them home to me. And I stumble upon them when I'm on walks. All right, put those back over there. I'm trying to find my video, but I don't see it. So hopefully it's all, everything is all good. Oh, thank you. All right, let's move this over so it's all straight. Let me tell you what I have. So I have my little collections and I, I just have this piece of tracing paper here and I have um, in this little dish, I have some watercolor. It's the color I used last week, I think. Um, it's Alvaro's Caliente Gray. And I have charcoal pencil, Stabilo pencil, and mechanical pencil, which I'm gonna put over here. And I have this fun, it is called Ancient Drawing Material. <laughs> That's what it's called. And I ordered this from um, Jean Oliver's shop. She has some really cool drawing materials in her shop. And this is called Honister Green Slate. And it's this kind of pigmenty thing, which we're gonna play with today. So this is what I am doing. I wanna not only look at my little subject, but I also want to look at the shadow. Now, because of all the lights in the studio, I have a double shadow and I'm going to ignore one of them. So I'm thinking about, okay, I was on the beach and the sun was shining and casting the shadow. Um, so I want to bring in the shadow of it. And I want to think about the shape and the texture. And okay, so I'm going to do a few of these in a couple of different ways. And I have my my book here. I think I need to rearrange my setup. All right. Let's see, what if I put it right here? Oh, yeah, we'll do that. Let me just move the pretty paper out of the way. All right, here we go. So I am going to take um, just a charcoal pencil and I'm going to just quickly look at the shape and then try to capture it. So I can do it one of two ways. This is kind of pretty. Actually, I could do the front, the back, the side, but there's some really interesting textures in this little piece of coral. I don't remember where it came from, but I'm just gonna sketch it on this side of my page. And you could do a contour drawing. And I'm just gonna, I'm not going to spend a lot of time agonizing over it, and that's something I do love to do. <laughs> I love to agonize over drawings, but that's not the point of this. The point is to kind of capture the essence of this little piece of coral.
or whatever it is you have collected. It could be your earrings. That would be a cool thing. I was actually thinking about the earrings. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is look at this shadow shape right here. Here's my, I'm gonna ignore the one on that side because this one, so there's this shadow shape here from my light and it's gonna get a little watercolor. And I'm gonna find that shape. If you're out walking on the beach and you come across like a piece of driftwood or a stone or anything, take a picture of it and look and pay attention to where the shadow and the shape that the shadow is casting. Now, because of the way I've lit it in the studio, it's right up, it's very tight up against this. Sometimes there's a separation and I, I may do that in, an, in another little drawing. So now I'm gonna just kind of go through and just put a little bit where I see some shadows. And then take my mechanical pencil and fill it with all these. And there's a lot of shapes within this as I start looking at it and like I see a little shape right here. And I can kind of keep retracing over it. And I like to do that. I like to trace over my drawing when I see new things. Instead of just staying with one line. And there's like a flat area right here. All right, so now I'm gonna take my Stabilo and just see what happens. I'm gonna come in here and just put a small amount and just darken this. I didn't do very, very dark, but I'm gonna try again. Sometimes you put Stabilo in wet, it gives you a cool There, I have more shadow. Maybe just a little bit over there. All right. So it kind of looks a little bit like a cactus right now, <laughs> in my opinion, opposed to a beautiful piece of white coral. And you're probably thinking, Renee, that looks a little bit like a cactus. It doesn't look like coral. All right, but that's okay. All right, so now, so I know that it's not a cactus. I'm gonna write coral <laughs> from the beach. In 2012, I'm making that up. I have no idea when I got this coral, but you can write that on there. All right, so let's put this aside. How about this little piece of coral? So this one is actually from France but I don't know if they they got it in France, but it came with when I ordered this little bowl from a company called Elsie Green, this was in it, which I thought was pretty cool. So now I'm gonna try and draw this and try not to make it look like a piece of cactus. Let me find a good side. It's really interesting, this little piece. It's like branch coral, I think. All right. Oh boy, what have I got myself into here? Do I keep going or do I give up? I don't know. This is like one of those things on Facebook Live, like what did I just decide to do? <laughs> so, so now there's some negative space in here and I'm gonna try and capture that. All right. be any tinier. All right, I'm just gonna quickly. So I'm gonna go with this, this one right here. This is a cool little, oh, I moved it. A cool little shadow shape here. I think the shed, 
creating that shadow it comes right off of here. There we go. And there's a little bit of shadow underneath here. So this is Wacky Coral from France. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna do some, one more, and then I'm gonna show you something else. Okay, so I have this little shell, which I think is, looks like a mini Nautilus. So let's see, let's get a good view of it. And so I'm just gonna make a list, you know, with the, you know, the cactus coral and then the wacky coral. And now I'm gonna do a little shell. Wait, do I have anything? Another piece of coral. Maybe I'll just stick with coral. Here's another piece. Yeah, let's do this. All right, this one's another wacky piece. But it's really good for my observational skills, even though talking and drawing is always a challenge for me. This is really pretty. I like this one, a little shape. All right, and then we're gonna just put some few dots, try not to make it look too much like cactus this time. And there's a really pretty shadow on this side that I'm gonna pick up. Okay, and then there's some nice shadow shapes in here, here. Okay, and then this is coral from the beach. Let's see, what if I take my tip of my brush and I make some? Okay, all right. So we have that now. And I have a little piece of sea glass, we could draw that. So I'm gonna test this out here. And let's see, how's this all gonna happen? Because this is wet. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna move this over and I'm gonna do it on this side. So I am going, let's see, what can I draw? Let me just find a piece here. Okay. I'm going simple today since I'm using this big chunky thing. All right, so I'm just gonna see what happens. So this is kind of this earthy pigment and it's a beautiful green. And looks a little, this little piece of coral looks like a heart. And I'm gonna take my brush and push through it. So Jean has some really interesting things in her shop. She has these um, like, pigment cigars are like wrapped up and they're different colors of pigment. So I'm trying to, I see light right here in the center. Now I'm gonna kind of find this side. We're gonna go on this side with the shadow shape and I'm gonna go over my drawing just a little bit. All right, so once that dries, I'll be able to get rid of the, the pigment there. All right. Let's see what else we have here. I'm starting to feel looser in this, and so I'm um, moving my arm a little bit differently. It always takes me some time. I, I'm sure you feel this way. It takes time to loosen up and get into your groove. That's why spending time with your drawings and is always a good practice. Okay. 
So I can still hear the birds. I'm not sure if you can, but they're way upstairs today. All right. And there's these beautiful patterns that we can observe and pull into this if I wanted to, or I could paint them. They're really pretty. I like the color. So this would be a beautiful, you know, if you really love watercolor, this would be a great thing to practice with your watercolors. All right, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera. I love this, like pigment is so beautiful. So now I'm using water, I don't know how, I haven't used this yet, and so I'm not sure how it's going to stay on my page. I'm gonna pretend there's a little shadow over here, because I don't really see one with the lighting I have. Okay, so it's a little heavy. I can pick it up. I actually like this one. All right, I'm gonna do one more experiment because I'm really curious to know. So this chunk here, I'm going, I have some walnut oil. I just wanna see what happens. It does inquiry minds wanna know. Okay, I'm gonna put it into the paper. This could be a great oil pigment. All right, let me just get a little brush here. I did not know I was going to do this, but. Okay, I'm going to pour it right in here real quick. I just need to see what happens. Oh, it's really beautiful. I hope you can see that. It's very beautiful mixed with the walnut oil. And I'm just doing this on watercolor paper, so I just kind of smooshed it in. Kind of love that. All right, so it can take on, it takes on a little bit different um, color than with mixed with water. So this was an experiment, and that's what I'm all about: experimenting and trying to, you know different ways that we can push ourselves as artists and explore, you know, different things that inspire us. So I was really inspired by this. I think it's just really beautiful. And I just want to like leave it out in my studio and make sure I play with it. So here is my coral with um, the ancient drawing material. <laughs> I love that ancient drawing material. Okay, and then with walnut oil. Okay, so there we go. That's our little exploration today in looking at collections and thinking about light and shadow and then just trying some different things to explore. So um, in the meantime, keep sketching, keep posting. I appreciate that. And thanks for being here today. Have a great weekend. I love you guys. Bye.